Welcome again to Acting Out of Love. As we last left Paul in this story, he has been arrested. And the Romans have come in and kept him from being beaten to death in the streets of Jerusalem. But now we find him in the custody of the Romans. Let's see what happens as we pick up the story in Acts 21 and verse 37. Acts 21 and verse 37. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I say something to you? And the commander said, Do you know Greek? Then you are not the Egyptian who some time ago raised a revolt and led the 4,000 men of the, uh, of the assassins out into the wilderness? Paul said, I am a Jew of Tarsus and Cilicia, a city of no insignificant city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the stairs, motioned to the people with his hands. And when there was a great hush, he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, saying, Men and brothers and fathers, hear my defense, which I now offer you. And when he heard they were that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even quieter. And I'm going to stop right there. And we're going to wait till the next time we're together to look at his actual defense and, and all that he says. But I want to point out a few things of what happens here. The Roman guard even assumed he knew who Paul was. Based on the, the violence against him, he thought this must be that Egyptian that, that, that led the assassins out against everyone. So, so that's what's going on here. He, he made an assumption. But when Paul speaks to him in Greek... The Roman takes notice. He, here is someone who, who is educated. Here is someone who is well-traveled. Here is someone who, who knows something. And then Paul simply asks, can I speak to the people? After defining, after saying that, hey, I'm a Jew in, in, uh, of, of a large city, then he turns to the people and he speaks to them in Hebrew. Paul is multilingual. Paul is addressing the Roman in the language that he was probably more familiar with. I know it's not Latin, Roman, it's Greek. That was still a very widespread, wide spoken language at the time. And there he speaks to the Roman and then he turns to the crowd and he speaks to them in Hebrew and that gets their attention. And when we're together the next time, we'll, we'll see what he says. How will Paul defend himself against this mob? He's got their attention. They're going to listen. What is he going to say to defend himself and what he's done. You know, Paul, you, you, we've been spending time with Paul. You know, you get the feeling he's going to start talking about Christ and the resurrection. And that's exactly, I think, where we're going to go. Thank you for joining me today. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, I thank you so much for the blessings that you give us. And Father, we thank you for men like Paul who were willing early on to die for you, to be arrested, to be mistreated, for your sake. Father, help us as we prayed yesterday. Help us to have the boldness, the strength, the courage, the faith to be able to stand for truth even, even when it makes us look foolish to the world. Maybe that's it, Father. Maybe we need to be foolish to the world when we stand up for you. Dear God, thank you for the foolishness of the cross. The foolishness of, of you giving up your son for an ungrateful creation. Father, help us to be grateful. Help us to understand your grace in Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to join you. I do look forward to these and I hope you do as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.